how's it going? Today we're working on a super fun and huge project. This is one that I talked to you guys about a few months ago. In fact, I went back to check which video it was. So it was uploaded on January the 6th and I was out here by our front entrance talking to you about the front fence line. Let me run over there. So there's our front fence line and I was talking about how I would love to outfit it with window baskets or some type of planter and just pack it out with annuals. But I didn't know if it was something that we'd be able to budget for or have time for this year. But Garden Artisans actually sent us 40, 44 inch hay racks to put on our fence so that we could do this project, which is so incredibly amazing. They're the company who I bought that big bunny topiary form from. In fact, we'll link all that stuff down below and, and with everything that we use today, we'll link down below as well. Um, so today I wanna show you these hay racks. We're gonna get them all installed. I've done um, several planters with this type of hay rack before. I did one out at my parents' house with the winter arrangement where I used blue spruce and some really pretty buried branches. I did a no maintenance fall window basket on my own potting shed this last year where I used cuttings from the garden and some decorative fall stuff. And then I've done several planting videos where I planted, you know, summer annuals. I did one in our old garden where I used begonias and potato vine and boxwood and I, it was just very, very pretty, I thought. Um, so I've got some experience with these baskets. Let me show them to you. So here's my helper today. Hi. <laughs> uh, so this is what they look like right here without the liner. They are black coated, uh, wrought iron, very, very sturdy. They hold up for a lot of years. And this black stuff actually, uh, I think it's black PVC is what they're coated in. And it lasts forever too. I don't know, how much do you think those weigh? A oh, lot, they feel pretty heavy duty. Yeah, they're heavy duty. And then we also have the liners, which we'll uh, bring out when we're all done installing them. So we had to kind of um, make our own brackets for this fence because there are specific railing brackets if you're gonna be putting this type of basket, like on a deck. But usually decks have a pretty good size railing, you know, like you could put your arms on it kind of comfortably. This fence is a lot more narrow, so those brackets didn't fit. Um, and then there's also specific wall brackets you can get if you're attaching it to a home, which we'll do a video about that later because we do have another basket we're gonna be putting on our barn. So we'll show you how you can attach those to your house and things like that. Um, but let me show you what we figured out for the fence. So this is what we came up with. These are brackets for two by fours, usually used in construction. They come in silver color um, from the hardware store, but we had them painted white. And then we put a 5 8 inch hole drilled through the bracket and a quarter inch bolt with a couple of nuts here and a big washer. So the bracket just slips right over the fence, perfectly snug. And I love that it's white, so it just kind of like disappears on the fence. We didn't want to see a whole bunch of shiny reflective silver um, because we do see this fence from both sides. So let me demonstrate how this goes on. It's really simple. See that? It just slides right behind that washer. Look at that. And then you can tighten the nut. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go get all the brackets and all the baskets and get them all installed on the fence line and then we'll move on to the next step. We just loaded a bunch of the baskets in the back of the truck. Um, so I think we're just gonna drive our truck along the fence line so that we don't have to lift those baskets very much distance. We don't have to carry them. And Aaron just went inside real quick to grab the rest of the brackets. We have a big box full of them. So many. Do you suffer? Yes. He she suffers. suffers. She suffers. <laughs> Here's the box full of brackets. And just so you guys know, this is the paint that they were sprayed with. Right there, good for metal. And here's a bunch of the hay racks. So something I'm just remembering now is that the first two openings are actually a different size than all the rest of these. So I know that the 44 inches are gonna fit perfectly from here over. And I know we'd only planned on putting one in this uh, opening because of the big planter, the estate planter right there. But this is um, kind of our wild card. We can't quite remember what we had figured for this because two of these baskets don't fit here. So I'm thinking that there was two 36 inch baskets for this spot instead, but we're just gonna have to wait and see what comes out of the boxes. I'm not so great at the planning part of these types of projects. Here's a little midway update. So we've got quite a few of them on already and they are looking really good. Can't wait to get flowers in them. All right, we've got all the baskets on and I'm loving it already. We put one on this side of the fence just to kind of like marry the two sides together even though they're quite far apart. And I think after we clean up all of the tumbleweeds right there, we're gonna plant something right here just to kind of mask this corner a bit. 
still have yet to, to uh, build something to mask the dumpster. Aaron, that needs to probably bump up on the priority I list. Know what to do, though. I know. I know. What is best? Suggestions, you guys. Give us suggestions. Yeah, Should we like build a little um, vinyl, like white vinyl, pickety looking thing around it? Like, would that look bad? I mean, we could definitely uh, bounce it back here and have it more tucked in than it is right now. That wouldn't be a problem. But anyway, let me run down here and I'm going to explain to you guys why we stopped the baskets right at the first pole. So you can see that we stopped the baskets right at this pole because this pole is quite the monstrosity and honestly the fence only stays short for three more spaces before it gets tall which we could I guess if we decide in the end to put more baskets right there to fill in that space we could but we did get permission from the owners of this property right here to plant on the outside of the fence to kind of mask these two poles. So we thought we would start planting right in here and eventually need to take the one basket down and maybe have like an evergreen right here. And then some really pretty small trees and small shrubs right in here. You know, not thick enough to where you can't get to the poles. Of course, not super tall because we're dealing with wires, uh, but just something to mask this area. So that's why we stopped right there. And then you guys might remember this little west side corner we're working on. We've got four trees planted and we'll get it filled in eventually. But I just love this. Look at that. Never in my life did I dream I'd be planting up this many window baskets at my own house. This is a really fun day. The next step is to line all of the hay racks with cocoa fiber liner. The beauty of these is that they're pre-molded to fit these baskets, which is so nice. You can get bulk stuff and line it yourself, but it is a lot easier to do it this way. I've done it both ways. There's also a difference in quality. So just make sure that if you are buying this, that you get the stuff that's nice and thick. Garden Artisan sent these out with the hay racks as well. Um, and you can tell how nice and thick that is. These help retain a lot more moisture than the thin stuff. Um, so you just simply just pop it right down in your basket, just like that, and then you fill it with soil. So real quick, I wanna show you some of the different brackets that are available for hay racks like this, depending on what kind of setup you have. Garden Artisans did send out a few um, so I could show them to you. So these right here are for railings and they're adjustable. So if you've got like, you know, different size railings, you can adjust depending on the size. They're still a little bit too wide for our fence railing, which is kind of a bummer because these are really slick. So you just, you know, set these on, adjust them to where you need them to be, tighten up the screw, and then you just set the hay rack right on those little uh, holders. So there's two like that. These are also for railings, for obviously wider railings, and these are non-adjustable. Um, but I do like these because they bump the hay rack out a little bit. So it rests right there, and then it uh, makes the hay rack sit away from the surface of wherever you've got it. There are these right here, which there's some screws in the box that you can screw anywhere and rest your hay rack on here. I probably wouldn't do a huge, huge hay rack with these just because of the weight. I'd probably save these for a smaller one. And then these are for a wall. So right here, you put your screws in top and bottom and you screw them to your wall. So this is just a wall bracket. Then the hay rack rests here. It keeps it away from your house or whatever wall you've got on it. So, or got it on so that no water or soil gets, you know, rests up against your house and starts deteriorating whatever material you've got. So anyway, I just wanted to show you those. Now we've got the truck full of the cocoa fiber. So we're gonna go ahead and fill the rest of the baskets up and then we're gonna move on to soil. The second to last step for the project for today anyway is to fill the baskets with soil and we've got the truck loaded up with a Spoma potting mix. These are all one cubic foot bags so they're really easy to haul around. I am guessing it's going to take one and a half to two bags for each basket but we'll see. Oh maybe just a slightly over one bag. So it took just slightly over one bag to fill this and then with the excess that I had left in the second bag I was able to fill this basket that far. So a lot better than I thought. So we got them all filled up from that end down to about here. A little bit of that one filled. We've got about 12 and a half more to go. We ran out of soil so that means we're gonna have to run back down to the garden center and get some more. But I think we'll save that part of the project for a different day because it is getting a little bit late. And I would like to um, finish up with our last step of the project for today and that's setting it up or doing the initial setup for drip. Um, so we're not exactly sure how we're gonna do this. I know we're gonna run 
uh, probably some half inch black poly tubing all the way down uh, the top of all these hay racks. We've got a faucet on the far end here that we're gonna hook it up to. And then I don't think we're gonna run all of our mitters until all the plants are in so I know exactly where to run them. Um, but we'll show you the supplies we're gonna start with today. So this is the faucet that we're gonna be hooking all of these hay racks up to water. Um, so all the hay racks are right down the fence line there. So we do have to run some tubing a little ways to get to the basket. So this is the, what we're using. This is half inch, just regular poly tubing. There's no holes in it. Um, so I've got an adapter here. Well, first off, I guess I should say I've got a timer here. This is a really simple one that allows you to um, select how many minutes you want it to run and what interval you want it to run at. So like when it's 100 plus degrees, we'll probably have it run every 12 hours for a little while. When it's not quite that hot, we'll have it just run once a day. So, you know, you can adjust that really easily. So that goes into the faucet first, and then we have an adapter that hooks onto any regular faucet end, um, and then you can hook your drip tubing to this. So let me get this hooked on here and find an end on my tubing. So this just push it, this right here just pushes right into this adapter. Aaron, I might need your muscle for this. I think you probably want to take this off first. So you can what get off? some this right here. I'm I'd say over. No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> you here, hold the camera. <laughs> hold the camera. Okay. I think you just want to be able to do one of these. So you can get some serious oomph. There. I'll hide it. Oh. And then it'll it'll twist. I think that's what you want. Oh, you're close. <laughs> Back it up Quite for the you. camera woman there. <laughs> hey, <laughs> shush. There we go. I'd say thank you, but you gave me a sassafras. Well. Okay. All right, what's next? All right, so now I'm going to run it over to where we need to bring it up to the first basket. Are we going to bury we this? Trench this? We probably should. Probably just, trench it. You know, just give us, just leave enough. We can trench it later. Okay. Um, so just, uh, Laura, as you take it off, it's going to kink if you do that. Roll it, roll it off instead of just pulling it off. Here, you do this part. Okay. So we are going to trench this area so that we can bury the tubing along the fence line there. And that way you won't see it because that's really the last thing you want to see when you're trying to do something pretty. Well, I was thinking maybe we could um, put an elbow in and run it up the telephone pole because you won't really see it as opposed to like up a fence post because it's because it's black right you'll really see it what do you think so if we so for now though should we go underneath and then it kind of just needs to snake right behind here and so if we just leave ourselves a little bit of slack along the way there we can add any connectors like we'll probably want to put an elbow right here so that it you know naturally wants to go straight up and then another elbow so that we can get it to go um straight there you want to bring me a coupler and one more roll? Sure. Okay, so we used our first 100 feet to go from the faucet to, oh, we got about halfway down. Uh, and then Aaron used one of these. These are a straight connector, straight coupler here to hook another roll of tubing on and he's gonna take off in this direction. I don't know if we have enough pressure to actually make it all the way to the end. So that's gonna be kind of like just a test for us to see if it actually works. I've never gone this far before on a stretch. They don't Low, take that much water. Right. So I think it'll work if we have to trench, you know, have this be two zones and trench a new line and stub up here and have the second zone start from here and go on or whatever. We can do that too, but we'll just try it and see if it works. I think it will. That'd be a total bummer if we had to do that. It's all right though. Yeah. While Aaron is working on the rest of the tubing, I'm gonna work on this little area by the telephone pole with the elbow connectors, and then I'm gonna zip tie the tubing to the telephone pole um, so that we don't have to look at it. And then I'm also gonna need a couple of elbows here. And check this out, you guys. Like, this is so handy. See this little, like, organizer thing? Aaron got it all set up for me with all of my irrigation supplies, which you can see I'm out of a couple of things, but I've got all the connectors I need for quarter inch tubing, for half inch tubing. Um, there's stakes, there's hose and adapters. Um, I just ran out of the two gallon per hour, per hour emitters, but I've got the ones in half gallon. And then I usually have landscape staples in here, which I just ran out of too. Um, but it sure makes your job a lot easier when you're organized and you have multiple supplies on hand. 
It's funny to me that you call it a telephone pole. Is it, what is it? Well, it's like a power pole. Oh. But well, who, isn't it? Isn't I called it a people? telephone pole when I was a kid too. But when then you when were I, a kid? yeah. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> well, once I became a cable guy, then I realized that like very few of them actually have telephone wires. Oh. Well, I'm gonna have to put several of them together here to make it around the pole. You know, actually, now that I think about it, it's a code violation to attach anything to a power pole. So, so we can't do that. I don't think we should. I think if Idaho Power came out, I think that they would just rip it off. We get in trouble. Okay, yeah. so what I'm going to do then, it's not a big deal. I'm just going to run it right on the ends. Well, probably, yeah. What do you think? On the inside of this one? Yeah, that looks good. Do you really need it? Can you just put a zip tie uh, yeah, along here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That way there's no zip tie on the fence. I was determined to put a zip tie on the fence. Okay. So that's essentially how it's gonna be all the way down the line here because yeah. we'll just zip tie it to the top. See, you guys, like you'll barely even be able to tell and that's where the water will run and then we'll be able to punch into this and then run individual emitters, probably three or four, probably four in each basket. Um, and it'll be completely hidden and completely automated. All right, we'll update you when we're maybe halfway through. <laughs> so in like three hours. <laughs> Hopefully not three hours. No, we'll be done in like, like 30 minutes. So we've got the tubing run on the tops of all of these baskets, the whole length of this fence line. So you can see right there and see how it comes in front of the fence post. I'm not super crazy about how that looks right now, but we're putting super tunias and super bina in here. And there's no way that those plants aren't going to cover up that extra tubing. Those plants will grow so much that they'll be going over the back of the fence and draping down the front. So now we're at our opening here. So we're going to put a couple more elbows in right here. So an elbow so it can go straight down and then an elbow so it goes over. Then we have to trench. So we're going to just do a little bit of a trench right here in the opening. And we're going to put, we'll run that tubing inside these pipes. Um, so that it, you know, kind of protects them from cars driving over and maybe crimping or crushing the tubing. Um, so that will go, that'll lay in the trench with the tubing inside and then we'll put a couple more elbows in, come up and then over to this last basket and we're gonna actually uh, tap in for these big containers as well. I feel like my life has been like just a series of digging projects lately. Yeah. All right, well, I am officially super dirty and I'm taking a little bit of a break. I need to go down to the garden center to pick up the extra soil and get a different digging tool for this opening because uh, Aaron was trying to trench it and it's super, super compacted and obviously because we drive over it all the time. So we need something different. And I needed to take a little bit of a break anyway because I'm delivering a meal to a family that is going through a little bit of a hard time. Um, so I just never realized what that meant to a person who's going through something in some kind of upheaval or some kind of new transition, uh, transitional stage in their life um, until after we had Benjamin. When we had Benjamin, people brought us dinners and desserts and things like that. And it was so amazing and it meant so, so much to me. And I'd never been in a position before to receive meals like that. Thankfully, I haven't gone through any real rough times in my life. Um, and I had never had a baby before. Uh, and so I just thought, you know what? This is something I need to do. I need to take pe food to people who are, like who could just use it? Who could use the encouragement or the break from having to worry about, you know, what to cook or what to fix or whatever. Anyway, so I'm not saying that for any accolades or for any credit whatsoever. I just wanted to encourage you guys that if you know somebody who could use a little bit of extra love in their life, make them some food and take it to them today. So I went down to the garden center and got the digging bar. Is that working a little better, Aaron? A little bit better. I got the pickaxe too. You can try that too. Yeah, that's usually pretty helpful. And we've got a napping baby over here. So cute. Probably don't have the right shoes on for this job. Yukon Cornelius. <laughs> hey, Russell. Hi, hey, kitty kitty. What are you doing, bud? Good boy. Well, we've got the trench all dug, so now we are going to put the drip tubing through the pieces of pipe, put the pipe in the trench, and then bury it. And hopefully, we don't have any breaks, so we don't have to dig that trench up again. Hold on, baby. Benjamin, let's go see what your kitty's doing. Let's go see. 
Russell, what are you doing? What are you doing, buddy? It's a family affair out here tonight. Aaron just walked down the way to turn on the hose. We set up one emitter at the very end here just to make sure it all works. We got all of the, the pipe buried. Let's check it out. I hear something. Look, baby, it works. Yay! Yeah. That's so exciting, you had to drool a big bunch. <laughs> Good boy. It is working, which makes me very, very excited because the water originates way down there like you saw and it travels the whole fence line underneath the ground right here and then to this last basket. It does look like it's trying to push some more air out of the lines here. We just turned it on. But look at that, that is good. So I will be able to actually punch in right here and go right into the estate planter here and the same thing goes on the other side. But you can see that the tubing ends here, goes to the fence line there, elbows down, and then it elbows again and goes under the ground. And the trench is no more and it looks pretty darn good. And does the same thing. So elbow, elbow, and then it just cruises along the top of these to the hose faucet at the end. And like I said, all of the black tubing will be hidden um, eventually by all of the plants that are gonna be in these baskets. And that will be hidden as well because there's going to be a um, great big plant in the center and then I'm gonna put super tunias around the outside of it and those will all spill over so you definitely won't see this tubing in the end. So that is actually it for today's video. We just really wanted to show you the whole infrastructure of how this project is set up, how we were running water to it, um, the baskets themselves, huge shout out and thank you to Garden Artisans for sending us what we needed for this project because honestly, if they wouldn't have sent it, we probably wouldn't have been able to get this project done this year. So it's very exciting. I'm just so thrilled with them and with the way they look and I'm so excited to put flowers in them and for you guys to see them, um, you know, grow through the season and you'll get to see them from like the, from nothing um, to full of color. And I love watching other people do stuff like that. So I hope that this whole project, I know it's a little bit, a lot of it over the top um, as far as numbers and the mass amount of plants we're going to be putting in but the whole our whole goal in doing projects like this is to inspire you and I enjoy doing it I love being out here doing stuff like this um, more than on anything else so anyway I will uh, drop a link for garden artisans down below you can go check out their website they've got tons of stuff to look at you can request a catalog it's really fun to look through that as well I want a bunch of stuff from there now um, and then we will be coming back at you guys with a second video when we put the plants in and when we actually set up drips. So I'll talk about um, the type of plants I'm putting up here and why and then how much water we're running to them and all of that good stuff. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video and we will see you guys in the next one. Bye.